establishing convergence of a sequence boils down to the computation of a limit. You have already computed a lot of limits, limits of a function. Fortunately, computing limits of sequences is often easier than computing limits of functions. First of all, all our familiar rules like the sum rule and the quotient rule, etc. also holds for limits of sequences. And, even better, convergence of the function corresponding to a sequence implies convergence of that sequence. So, convergence of functions is actually stronger than convergence of sequences. In this video, you will see a quick reminder of all those limit rules, and you will see two theorems which we will use to compute all limits of sequences. So, let us take a look. First of all, we had our rule, our zero rule of our constant multiples. If you have a constant c, you can take it out of the limit, take it in front, and we get the limit n to infinity of c times a n, take the c in front, and equals c times the limit n to infinity of a n. Then, same as for functions, we have the sum rule, limit n to infinity of a n plus b n equals limit n to infinity of a n plus limit of n to infinity of b n, if all limits exist. So you can compute either sum first and then limit, or limits first and then sum. Next, product rule. What again was the product rule? Well, if you have a product, uh, limit n to infinity a n b n, then you can compute either the product first, or take first the limit and then the product. So compute limit n to infinity a n times limit n to infinity b n. So you can take them apart. If both limits exist. And similarly for the quotient rule, limit n to infinity of a quotient a n over b n, you can take quotient first, and then limit, or first limit a n to infinity a n, and then divide by limit n to infinity b n, provided you're not dividing by zero, of course. Quotient rule, also the same as uh, for limits of functions. And then for continuous functions, you can take limits inside. So limit n to infinity of function of some sequence a n, then you can take uh, first the limit and then the function, so you can take the limit in, and you get the function in the limit n to infinity of a n. So those are all completely the same as for uh, limits of functions. And similarly, we also have the squeeze theorem, which says that if you have three quen sequences, like an a n and b n and c n, where the b n is in between the a n and the c n. Suppose your a n and c n converge to a certain value, your b n is always in between, so b n has no place to go, so the b n has to go to the same limit. And that's what the squeeze theorem says. So your b n between a n and c n uh, limits uh, of a n and c n exist and are both the same l, then the limit n to infinity b n also has to be equal to l. Sim, uh, same squeeze rule as we had for functions. And then, uh, finally, a theorem uh, which relates functions and sequences. Suppose you have your limit of a function f x, and this limit exists for x to infinity. And suppose you have the corresponding sequence, so a n is a function evaluated at the integer values. So uh, remember when we, had, uh, when we have, for example, f x equals 1 over x, our a n will become 1 over n f x is defined for all x, and your a n is only defined at n equals 1, 2, 3, etc. So we have the sequence corresponding to the function. If this limit of my function exists, then also the sequence a n is convergent and has the same limit. So if you know that the limit of the function exists, then also of the, the limit of the sequence exists. But this is actually stronger. The the limit of uh, it does not necessarily hold vice versa. So now we have all our limit rules, uh, we have two theorems, so we are ready to compute some limits in the next video.